Welcome to Crimepedia. I am your host this week. My name is Morgan. I hope you are having a wonderful day. With me, as always, is my true crime BFF. She is the lovely Cherry. Hello, Cherry. Well, hello. Thank you for joining How us. Are you? you doing well? I am. I am doing very well indeed. Thank you very much. How about you? Very, very nice. Good. Um, I got a squeaky chair think... today. I'm trying to sit very still. Oh, no. I don't know what's happened, but it's got a big <laughs> every time I move. So I'm going to try and I apologize in advance for anyone who hears any squeaking whilst, <laughs> whilst this episode is running. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a new Patreon to say hello to. Woo-hoo! We do. We do. We have Who's to that? say hello to Lisa and Penny the Cat. Oh, hello, Lisa and Penny the Cat. I wonder if Penny the Cat listens think, to our episodes. I wonder how many pets listen. I, ho- I hope so. I hope so. What if there's like, um, uh, what's a bird that like mimics like a parrot? Cockatoo. Like a parakeet or something. Right? Yeah. A cockatoo, right? What if there's a cockatoo <laughs> that listens and, and all it does is say, Bah! That would be hey. fun. That would be really fun if that was the case. I would love to know. Mm. That would be so good. It would. Or how, oh, it drops like a however. <laughs> however, yeah, possibly. So you've got an update for us, haven't you? For one of the cases, uh, it was your case. It was the yeah. Breckenridge case. We've got yeah. a, a um, very frustrating update for you. I have mixed feelings about this. So if you remember, um, oh man, it's been two years, what, two years now. Yeah. When I did the, uh, was it three or four parts on Breckenridge? Yep. And uh, that was the murder of Annette Schnee and Bobby Joe Oberholzer. And then we had the update where there was a arrest made, and that was uh, the, they arrested a man by the name of Alan Lee Phillips in uh, connection to the murders. Then last fall, so fall of 2022, he was found guilty of on all counts, and he was sentenced to, to spend the rest of his life in jail. Mm. I think he was sentenced in November. Well, we have received word that um that last week so i believe it would have been on february day was that february 27th yeah i think it was i think it was that alan lee phillips is now dead so apparently he had um he had leaped from a uh i'm guessing it was a third story like walkway in prison uh, in in j- jumped over railing headfirst, um, landed, and after you know trying to save him or you know revive him out of the thirty minutes, uh, he ended up dying of his injuries. So sounds like Alan Lee Phillips decided to uh, to take his life, and and uh, he couldn't he couldn't live with spending the rest of his life in jail. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, frustrating. Um, it is very frustrating that. He doesn't get to just sit in jail and just not have freedom and think about what he did and, hmm. and can, not get out easy. I can't now, imagine what a family. Is, like, it sounds like he 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 it sounds like he he might have suffered for thirty minutes before he died. Hmm. But I'm sure that's no consolation to her family, to the girls' families. Mm-mm. It's no. um, scary, isn't it? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I don't know yeah. how you even how how you even give prisoners that option of you know jumping to their death. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's just I find that I find stuff update. like that. I find stuff like that really, really. It makes me really cross because I feel really sorry for his family who obviously love him and 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and they've got love for their family member, despite the fact that he's done terrible things. And they are grieving mm-hmm. the fact that he they found out that he's done these terrible things. And they're grieving because mm-hmm. of that. Because that must be a hell of a shock to find out that your dad yeah. or your son or your brother is capable of doing something so heinous. And then I'm really angry for the girls, the victims. I'm angry for their families because it feels like he's taken the easy way out that he's like, no, do you know what? Yeah. I can't deal with this. And so I'm going to end my life. Well, they didn't choose to end their life. You chose to end their lives. Why should you get the say when right. you end your life? You don't have that right because you took other no. people's lives, you know? So it's just one of those things. Don't even start me on that rant. Cause I'll be here for ages. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how to, what, how to feel about that and what to think. No. When you when you messaged me and said we've had we've had an update, I was like, oh no, somebody's done it in prison. I didn't realize it; he'd done it himself. Yeah, yeah. So what an update! Not a great update to to be giving, but no. it's an update nevertheless. Crazy. Very very crazy. Okay. Anything else? So we anything need to else up- going on? No, I was say that to you. Anything else to <laughs> update with? No, I don't think there is. Um, I think no. that's that's it for this week. That's our only update. And hello to our new Patreon. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate having you. And hopefully you enjoy the extra content that you get over on our Patreon. There's some fun stuff. Yes. And hello, Penny the cat. Hi, Penny the cat. <laughs> You're my favorite. <laughs> All right. How about we just jump into this week's episode then? Let's go. The haunting mystery of a young girl's disappearance has gripped the family for over 40 years. In 1981, a routine family outing to a local supermarket ended in unimaginable tragedy when two-year-old Catrice Lee vanished without a trace. Despite tireless efforts by her loved ones, The truth behind her disappearance remains shrouded in mystery. This is Crimepedia, and this is The Disappearance of Catrice Lee. All right, Cherry. Catrice Lee was born on November 28th, 1979, to parents Richard and Sharon Lee at the British Military Hospital in Rintelen, West Germany. The Lees were originally from Hartlepool, but Richard, who was a sergeant major in the 15th, 19th King's Royal Hussars of the British Army, was stationed out of Allenbrook Barracks in Paderborn, West Germany at the time. Now, on November 28, 1981, the Lees were preparing a birthday party for Catrice, who was turning two. Sharon's sister, Wendy, and her husband, Cliff, have, had driven down from Bielfield, West Germany, to celebrate with the Lees. Sharon needed to get some items for the party and decided to go to the nearby Naffy shopping complex at Schloss Neuhaus. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, a Naffy, which stands for Navy, Army, and Air Force Institutes, is basically a uh, like a shopping complex yeah. where British fil- military families can get goods that they might not be able to find in local shops. Yeah. So these are located abroad. So wherever British uh, troops are stationed abroad, they have these naffy shops. Okay. Now, while these naffies are usually located within British military zones, this particular naffy at Schloss Neuhaus was located just outside of the zone right. within a German city. Okay. Now, the naffy was extremely crowded on this day. It happened to be the last payday before Christmas, and families were stocking up for the holidays. Sharon, her sister, Wendy, and Catrice were driven to the naffy by Richard, who would drop them off at the entrance and wait for them in the car park. Also known in America as a parking lot. It's a parking lot. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, Catrice was being a little fussy that day and was refusing to ride in the shopping cart. So Sharon resorted to carrying Catrice around while she shopped. After gathering the supplies they needed for the party, Sharon would put Catrice down as they began to check out. At that point, Sharon would realize that she had forgotten to get crisps or potato chips and would quickly run back into the aisles to grab some, leaving Wendy and Catrice at the checkout. Now, according to Wendy, Catrice had immediately chased after her mother down a shopping aisle. By the time Sharon returned to the checkout with the crisps, 
Catrice was gone. Oh, no. Wendy, of course, had thought that Catrice had caught up with Sharon, while Sharon had thought that Catrice had stayed with Wendy. Sharon and Wendy would immediately begin searching the store for Catrice, yelling down the aisles in a desperate attempt to locate her. They would search both the food and clothing halls, calling Catrice's name before realizing that she was nowhere to be found. By this point, Richard had begun to grow concerned and decided to enter the store to see what was taking so long. He would find Sharon and Wendy in the manager's office crying. He would then be informed that Catrice was missing. Richard would head home to alert Cliff, who had stayed at the Lee's home in order to watch their oldest daughter, Natasha, and to grab a picture of Catrice in hopes that someone had spotted her. Now, on the day of the disappearance, Catrice was wearing a turquoise mother care duffel coat with fur trim, a white blouse, a blue and green tartan pinafore dress, white tights, and red Wellington boots. Oh, cute. Very cute. And very, um, one thing I, I thought too was like, these are very, uh, these are colors that are going to stand out. So yeah. not muted colors at no. all. Right. So you should be able to spot, you know, a, a two-year-old wearing a, a turquoise coat and have red boots Yeah, on. bright red boots. That's right. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you would think. If if someone had seen her, they or seen anyone, you know, a two year old or a young child wearing something like that, yeah. they would be able to say, "Oh yeah, I saw her." Yeah, here. um, and then obviously CCTV wasn't a thing back then in seventy nine. Uh, in eighty one, eighty one. Sorry. Well, it was, it was, it, but, um, this is the one the one thing I want to say about like the, the, the snaffy. So when I say like shopping complex or or, yeah. or supermarket, yeah, it's not you know you uh, yeah. imagine like it's a square small. building, a, yeah, the yeah yeah like maybe they have the like like the like the automatic doors maybe yeah. This is actually a um the, a repurposed building yeah. So the building is is on I would call it on a on the grounds of of a castle. Right, okay. I mean it's, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So it's a very old building. Yeah. It's not modern in any sense of, of the imagination. Um they just just happened to be a building that 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 had been used by previous German governments. Um and it was easy to to transition to being uh transition to being a, a shopping area. Yeah, I understand, yeah. And so because it's older and, and they're just kind of repurposing it, there are no CCTV cameras either inside the supermarket or outside no. of, of the building, right? So authorities would have absolutely no ability to determine how, if Catrice left the building, how she would have left How she would have gone, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, there are other issues that, that kind of complicated the initial search and investigation, some shoppers were actually allowed to leave the building and simply drive oh, off before no. a lockdown of the facility was put into place. So, so, so people were free to come and go as they please. Yeah. Uh, p- people were leaving. They were getting a car. They were driving away, and the, no one was being stopped. No one was being questioned. That's crazy. Yeah. So, not only were possible witnesses able to leave. Without being questioned, yeah, poss- so too were possible suspects. Suspects, that's if right. Catrice had been abducted. Yeah. All right. Oh dear. So already really frustrated. I mean, I, I understand it. It would be tough to to quickly shut down a facility like that. Yeah. But it, it seems like it. Nothing was being done in in the immediate the immediate moment. Yeah. Right then. As soon as you hear two year olds missing or a kid's missing. You shut everything down. Sh- yeah. Shut everything down. It w- yeah. No. Yeah. Shut everything down. Now the Royal military police were immediately contacted and would begin an extensive search of the area. Now, while the Royal military police did have jurisdiction over the NAFI, they were actually required to negotiate and work with the West German civil police since the building within was within a German town and located on civilian premises. Yeah, not on not on military premises. Okay. Yeah. So they would have to go if anything outside of the building, if they wanted to search, they had to get permission before yeah. doing so. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, shortly after the search began, both the RMP and the local police would start to work off the theory that Catrice had simply walked out of the supermarket alone. It was huh. suggested by law enforcement that Catrice may have walked to a near to the nearby River Leap. 
oh, fallen in fallen and in. drowned. But surely, if you're in the now, car park as an adult, if you're in the car park and you see a toddler walking on their own, wouldn't mm-hmm. you? Wouldn't you go like, where? I've, I mean, I've done it when you walk and you see a little kid and you think, "Hang on a minute, where's your parents?" You know, that kid's yes. by itself and it's walking where cars yeah. are driving around, and I can't see a parent. Mm-hmm. So, surely there were other people in the car park. I feel the same way mm. as you do. Yeah. And the leaf felt the same way. They saw the possibility of Therese navigating her way to the re- river as not being feasible at all. No. Okay? She's about, she's three For years her, old. Exactly. For her to not even, no, she's not, just turned two. Yeah, so she's tiny. She's, she's tiny. <laughs> so for her to do that, she would, would have had to walk out of a crowded naffy, right? Yeah. Down a ramp, open the door, into a car park, Cross the park, the car park. Okay. Yeah. Go through a hedgerow. No. And then get no, into the river. No. Okay. Not only that, the Lees were insistent that that Catrice would not have gone to the water, as she had a phobia about water. So much so that she even had would get, comp- get throw huge fits. She would get really upset anytime it was bath time. But she, yeah, she but ha- did not want anything to do with water. She's two, but she's two. I don't suppose she would be if she had have gone that far. I don't suppose she would have looked at the water and gone, "Oh, I don't like water. I'm going." I don't think it works no, like yeah. that. I can, I get what they're but trying she to say. Been, she wouldn't have been intrigued by it. She wouldn't have been like, "Oh, look, let's go check out the water." I, I think that's what they're saying. Yeah. I don't think she would have like been freaking out and like running and screaming. No. But I think they I don't think they would have been she would have been enticed to go to the river. But she might have been enticed to go so- something that's near the river. It might not have been the river itself, Possibly. but it could have been something yeah. that was close to the river that she maybe had mm-hmm. been enticed by. But this sounds True. more likely to me that it's going to be somebody who's just picked her up and taken her. But I mean, there surely there were people yeah. at the checkouts, right? There must have been other there people were. in the queues. There were. Or at other checkouts. We'll get to... Yeah, we'll, yeah, they, there were, and we will get to that just in a moment. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so, so despite the, the fact that the feasibility of her walking yeah, out of all the way, going across the park, getting all the way to the river without mm. being seen, no one seeing her, no, no one stopping that's her, weird. being, being very small. Yeah. Besides that, police actually put very, very little thought into the idea that Catrice may have been abducted. Oh God, really? Yes. Now, after a thorough search of the river with the use of divers and a house house search, no signs of Catrice were ever found. Not one piece of evidence has ever been unearthed, and no items of her items of her closings have ever been found. There is nothing to indicate that she that she went into that water, that she drowned. Nothing. And you would think, let's remember what she was wearing. Turquoise coat. Yeah, that's right. Red, bright red boots. Red Wellington boots. Yeah, white tights. If she would have, if she would have went to the water, guess what? That would have stood out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was, none of that was ever found. I mean, it, this sounds to me this straight straight off the first thing I would think of is that this is an abduction, because yeah. a a, to, a a small child like that can't run at an extortionate pace you know um Mm -mm. you can you can catch up to a two-year-old that's toddling off you know she is a toddler Mm -hmm. she's not um you know she's not a young child that can run quite fast i mean she's a toddler so although yes they can move quite quickly not quickly enough to have not been found near the river you know as and when they had discovered she was missing the other thing that's quite Mm -hmm. worrying is that this wouldn't have been a planned abduction because they obviously had just decided to go to the the naffy store so this wouldn't have been something that they did every week at the same time and then somebody's gone oh look you know that little kid we're going to mm-hmm. take her there was nothing to say that the mum was going to run back for the crisps and so but you've got to be pretty brazen to pick up a two-year-old in a in a busy shopping you know in a busy shop I mean it doesn't even yeah. have to be a huge supermarket even in like a a shop mm-hmm. you've got to be pretty brazen to pick a little kid up and take it outside however we know that it happens look at the Jamie Bolger case it does you know those two children mm-hmm. walked out of the shopping center holding his hand it it happens yeah. so my first initial thought as an investigator would be okay Let's look at who was in the parking area. Let's look at who was in the shop. Let's stop everyone from leaving. I, d- mm-hmm. I don't understand why they didn't put that forefront. Well, th- there's issues with with determining who was there. 
Of course. Um, That's right, because they let people leave. Well, here's the thing. Nafis, which are typically only supposed to be used by British military right. and families. Yeah. Right? Um, this Nafi, for whatever reason, had non-military yeah. men and women shopping there. Possibly because so it was just outside were, of the area. It's not on military. It was. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. So so anyone could walk in, walk yeah. in off the street. So uh, Richard had stated uh, that they were known to have been Germans that shopped, of course. Yeah. He knew of uh, people that were from Poland, the Czech, uh, Czech Republic. Yeah. So so this is, you're, you're not limited to, to just suspects being potentially servicemen or their spouses. Yeah. This could have been anyone. Anyone, now, yeah. Now, the other thing was, um, right next to Nafi was a university. And apparently that day there was, they had, uh, I guess they called it an open day at, yeah. at the university. And people were using the Nafi parking lot that were going to that were from the university yeah as well yeah so the so the parking lot not only was it crowded inside the nafi parking lot was completely full and so there were just people just everywhere right so it could have so it's it's an absolutely impossible to like determine who was in the store and who left the store and who was there that should not have been yeah unfortunately that's crazy now as you know, Cherry, we absolutely love when police bungle investigations. One of our favorite things. No, I don't love it. It frustrates it. me. I know. That was sarcasm. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but we, we love it when this happens. Um, and of course, this case is not without questionable policing. Okay? Yeah. So to begin with, it would be nearly 24 hours before sniffer dogs would be brought out to the NAFI in attempt to pick up Catrice's oh, no. scent. Okay. Yeah. It would be nearly 48 hours before border police were notified of her disappearance. Okay. It would only take a person an hour and a half to reach the border of Netherlands by car. So, so within an hour and a half, someone wanted to get her out of the country, grab her and get her out of the country, an hour and a half. They didn't notify Border Patrol until 48 hours later. And it's very... 48 hours. It's very easy to change the sex and the look of a toddler. Because they're, they're, they're small. They it don't. I mean, let's, be, let's be honest. They don't have a lot of hair at that age. Okay. So if you've got mm -hmm. a little girl, quite obviously a little girl, you could... Chuck a pair of like jeans or trousers on that little girl, change its coat, and all, all of a sudden it looks like a little boy. Everyone is looking for a little girl in red wellies and a perp, you know, a turquoise coat. Right. When actually well, no, yeah, it's right. very quick and easy to change that child. We're not talking about a teenager, right. you know. So that again, right. that's quite worrying. The fact that the border is so close, and that mm -hmm. they did she have any distinguishing features? She did, um, but you wouldn't notice them. Um, Right offhand. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so it wouldn't it wouldn't be something like, oh, she has um, a cleft lip or something like that. So, um, I believe she had, yeah. So, like she she had, for example, she did have a pink birthmark, which was slightly to the right base of her spine. Ah, so not on her face or people, anything. Yeah, so people call it a rash. Now she also had um, strabismus in her left eye. Okay. OK, uh, what that is, is it is a condition which causes uh, it causes her left eye to not be aligned with her right eye when she's looking at an object. That's what we would call like cross eyed. So she looks kind of cross eyed. Cross -eyed yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. OK. Yeah. So unless you're like looking at her and you're looking closely, you, you wouldn't notice. But if you have grown up with a kid that had this condition that has this birthmark at the bottom of their spine and you're mm -hmm. listening to something like this child wasn't with you from birth, then this is obviously something that needs to be looking out for because if she has been, you know, taken and given to a family that have got no children and brought up somewhere else, you know, in another country, those are things that you need to look out for because I believe that can't be corrected very easily, the strabismus. It, it can. Oh, it can. So oh, okay. It takes. Okay, so it, it would. It Cat Catrice was scheduled to get to have two operations done to correct it. Okay. Um, her sister Natasha had the exact same issue. Okay. And, and went through the same thing. 
Okay. Um, now the Lees did provide police with this information. However, the police never released this information to the public. Oh no. When later questioned as Come to why on. it happened, if why this information had not been given out, the Lees would actually receive a written sta- statement back from the officer in charge who said that their claim to have given this information to police was, and I quote, a figment of their imagination. What? Yeah. That's yeah. just shocking. That's crap. It's very crap. Very crap. Th- this is a huge piece of information. Massive. Huge piece of information. Massive piece of information. Yeah. Like, not only is it, hey, I remember this girl who had that issue. Yeah, and she had that yeah. same birthmark. You could have been a girl like, oh, yeah, I had that issue when I was little yeah. and I got it corrected. Or you still got that issue because you haven't had it corrected. Because, yeah. you know, the family that you're in doesn't realize you can correct that. But surely right. if you have, I don't understand. You know, when you've got things like that, when somebody would, and this happens, you know, childless couples that are desperate for children, kids get sick. Mm-hmm. You've got to take the kids to yeah. a doctor at some point in their lives. Surely you mm-hmm. can't keep a kid at home without seeking any right. medical advice ever, the whole kid's right. life. So how do you, how does that work? How do you all of a sudden have this kid? How, how does that happen? And people don't question it. Friends and family don't question it. People, people do it. You remember the, the case I, I did about the, um, the young boy who, was, who disappeared from his backyard? Yeah, yeah. And the 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 mom and and the grandma took the neighbor kid yeah to yeah. to the doctors to to pass him off pass, as yeah that's as, right as as, the, as Cody yeah so so people people will go to whatever length it takes to to like hide oh. a kid's disappearance and to, to hide where this uh, where kids come from as a mother how can you do that to another mother as a woman who desperately wants a child. How can you take another woman's child? How can you do that? It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy, isn't desperation. it? Desperation. That, that's all it is. It has to be desperation. Yeah, definitely. It's just you must lie. You must. It must cross your mind at night that you've deprived this child of their real family, their real heritage, their real, mm-hmm. you know, their real identity. Because if you found out at what, what would she be now? Like forty. One forty-two. She'd be our age. Yeah, she'd be forty-three. Right. So, how would you feel finding I out? I mean, not our age. My age. You're twenty. I'm sorry. I'm You're still 20. twenty. Yeah, still twenty-five. Twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my age. My age. So forty-three. How? How? Like, how do you deal with something like that? I don't. I don't think this kid's fallen <sighs> in the river. Let's be honest. This kid hasn't fallen in the river. No. That's one. The no. second thing. The first thing that I immediately thought of: What if somebody had hit her? in the car park, like reversed over her mm, or, yeah. and panicked and put her in the car and got away right. quickly because they've panicked right. because they've hit a little kid. Because little kids are, yep. they are very small, you know? And that, that just made me yeah. think, what if somebody was, that was my first initial thought because that would explain the fact mm-hmm. that she's gone so quickly out of there and the fact that somebody's panicked and put her in the back of the car. I mean, my thought would be like, would, would there be any signs of, of a child being hit I mean, I guess it it could be quick enough where they 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 hit her and get her in before there's yeah. any sort of like anything blood yeah, loss, yeah. like significant blood loss or something like yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe because somebody might have panicked. I mean, that's the other thing is people leave mm-hmm. the scene of accidents all the time, and if somebody mm-hmm. and if somebody has hit the child, I mean, not necessarily killed her, but hit her and panicked because yes. they're. We had it recently, um, not far from where I live. Somebody knocked over um, a pedestrian. Um, panicked and left the scene and the person later died and that person's not mm, been found. Yeah. I mean, you know what CCTV mm-hmm. likes in cities now, but that person still yeah. hasn't been found. Nobody knows who did it other than the fact that this, quite obviously, this possession had been hit. Could this be somebody has reversed out of a parking space and has hit her and thought, shit, oh my God, I'm going to go to prison, yeah. you know, uh, you know, or I'm, I'm going to be in big trouble and put her in the car or... Has someone just snatched her and put her straight in a car, and that's it? Right. That's a very good point. Because if you think, like, once again, you've got to remember, this was, it was extremely busy. Yeah. I'm sure with the lack of parking, there's probably a lot of frustration going on. Yeah, and the fact that the people at the university are also using that car park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, that is a very good point. So there's cars coming and going all the time. 
It could be a younger person who's going to the university that's knocked her over and panicked put, and put her in the car because they've just panicked. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. And it's going to be very interesting in a little bit when, when we kind of talk about some other thing. Okay. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So before we get to that, let's let's frustrate you a little bit more, okay? <laughs> okay. So you mentioned you mentioned people working checkout. Okay. Yeah. So at the time of her disappearance, there were three staff members, three women working at the checkout at the NAFI. Okay. It would take police six weeks before they oh, first interviewed God. two of the women who were working at the checkout. Okay. Another six NAFI weeks. staff member who was there at the time of the disappearance would not be interviewed until nearly 20 years later. That is just, that's crazy. Well, I don't understand what are the epic failure of this police force. That's just it's standard terrible. policing. Even back it in is. 1981. It's still standard policing. And, and you think, okay, this is the Royal Military oh, Police, right? Yeah. You would think that they would be like on top of this. Of you course, would think, of right? course you would. You trust that they would be on ta- on top of this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, even more shockingly, I know this is some crazy stuff, right? German police would also refuse to go the, to the press with any sort of appeal. It would be six weeks before any sort of information about the disappearance of Catrice Lee was reported in local newspapers. What? Why? Six weeks. Don't know. They would not give this any information to police or to to they wouldn't give any information to local newspapers at all. There's got there to be a, there's got to be a reason why they didn't do that though. Surely. There must be a reason why. <sighs> Who okay, so would German or German police under would they be following instructions from the RMP? Is RMP telling them not to release information? Why wouldn't you? Surely every force would want everybody to know about this to try and pick up this kid as soon as possible. Surely every, there's yeah. no reason to not give any any information out unless they think they already know who did it. And they don't want to spook them. But quite clearly Possibly. not because it's been 43 years or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. So quite clearly they had didn't have a suspect in mind that they've been following because they would have had them by now. They st- even here, th- they still believe that she just fell in the river. Nothing had changed. By this point, nothing had changed. Okay, I'd like mind. to see They're what... Like, oh, she fell in the river. I'd like to see what evidence they've got supporting that theory. N- Nada. None. Nothing. So if you have no information Jeez, or no evidence to, to, to indicate that that shows that she went into the river, right? No, No evidence. Then how can you be so absolutely sure that that's that's what happened? You can't. You can't that be absolutely. This was an accident. Yeah, you can't. That she drowned. You, you can't. can't. Because again. So then why don't you do? Why don't you do everything in your power to get the information out to try to get something, some sort of lead? Well, yeah, because surely that river, they must know if they think she fell in the river at that time. Then surely you go down river to where the body would float mm-hmm. to, surely somebody is going to see a child's body in the river. Okay, if the kid drowns straight away, because I'm guessing she can't swim at two, even if she drowned within meters of that, her body would most likely sink to the bottom. And then as soon as the body yes. starts to c- decompose, the gases will, will fill the body and the body then it presents itself up onto the top of the water. Sometimes, exactly. obviously, we know from other cases and from science that sometimes the body will get snagged did they ever yes. drag the river? They did. How and how long find? after did they drag the river? Uh, sh- sh- it was shortly after. I don't know the exact time frame, but it was like it was it was shortly after her disappearance. They they did they did so. Yes, and they found nothing. Nothing. So so where's the where's the proof that she's in the river then? That doesn't make sense. There is none. That's so frustrating for her none. family. That's so frustrating. Now the river is a tributary, so it, it 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 flows westward. Yeah. Until it meets the Rhine, okay? Yeah. But the Rhine is some 80 kilometers away. 
there's no way that she went that, that far. far. She would be if she was in the river, she she would be there, right? They would find her. Definitely. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. That right? is, is completely unbelievable. Oh, you want you want some more, not really. more information no. or more things that are going to piss you off. No, not really. I, f- I just feel okay. so angry for her family. So you mentioned, oh, what if someone had possibly hit her? Yeah. And, you know, just threw her in the car. Okay. Yeah. Now, an eyewitness at the time did come forward to report that they had seen a man carrying a small child and placing them into a green sedan in the area where Catrice was last seen. Police would create a photo fit of the man based on the description given by the eyewitness. Okay. However, police at the time would discount this eyewitness information, and it would be 36 years until it was released to the public on an episode of Crime Watch in 2017. Okay, so her body's not found in the river. The most likely thing is that someone has taken her they have an eyewitness that says they see a man with a toddler putting a toddler into a car and they discount that evidence why yeah why yeah. don't no reason they haven't given so a for reason 36 why years so no no God reason why damn they buried it it was completely buried by the royal military police for 36 years no one knew about this person of interest no one knew about this green sedan no one had knew anything about this that's just, I, oh, I don't understand. I don't get that at all. Not at all. I don't either. That's just a failure in policing. They they are just burying all this potential information that could help finding this little girl. They just buried it. It's, I don't understand. I just, I like to think that police, you know, that they, they do their job because they care. I like to think that's the case. But this mm-hmm. doesn't. This doesn't make any sense, any reason why you would withhold that information. So I'm quite confused as to. I'm quite confused as to why they would withhold this information, particularly something that 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 big. Because they didn't think it was important. (laughs) No, of course it's not. They didn't think it was important. That's ridiculous. No, absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that simply that is simply it. That's the answer. They didn't think it was. Uh, just, prevalent in, just, this, in their investigation just, it wasn't important whatever this person saw it w- had nothing to do with it it's because they've got it in their that's mind why. that she's gone in the river so they're ignoring everything else yes yeah they, they've got so their if she went of, in the river yeah. then yeah if she went in the river then a man putting on a car is obviously wrong what's the, it's wrong it has to be yeah. wrong. It has to be wrong yeah right now this where so the case would would pretty much go inactive after this after eight, 1981 the case is completely inactive yeah nothing happens in this case now, in 2000, the police finally decided to re- reopen their investigation into her disappearance, okay? Now, at that time, improvements in computer technology allowed yeah. police to release an age-progressed image of what Catrice would have looked like in the year 2000. From that, numerous people would come forward who had never been previously interviewed, including a man who had been standing behind Sharon, Wendy, and Catrice at the checkout, as well as the third woman who had been working the checkout that day, Catrice went missing. Oh, God. It would take 19 years to interview a person who was right there at checkout. 19 and possibly had years. Some sort of information. 19 years. That's just ridiculous. And she had to come forward and say, hey, I was there that day. I was working the check, I was working checkout. No, 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 no. The, the police should have got the police should have been in that store with the manager and got the names and addresses and details of every single member working that day. Surely, mm-hmm. oh my, this is just terrible. Her poor family. It's just a bungle after bungle after bungle, this investigation. I've got a feeling that this this sounds like an argument between police forces. I'm wondering if this is the, mm-hmm. the military police and the standard police butting heads over who releases what, whose investigation this is, because this is old time policing, don't forget. This is like back in the yeah. 80s. So I'm wondering whether this is like a jurisdiction argument, because we, we know that 
the Royal Military Police do not like civvy police investigating their cases. I get it because they're military and they've got their own they've got their own police force. So I'm wondering whether these right. shortcomings are because they are arguing over who does what and then vital mm-hmm. evidence, vital procedures have been missed or not done p- because of this. No, I no, I wouldn't be shocked if that was the case. There has to be some some something that can explain explain this, right? Two different police forces cannot be so inept. They cannot be no, so no, no, bad no. at their jobs. Two completely different police of police forces. How many officers have worked on this case? <laughs> Numerous, numerous. They are, so sure every they're, single they're police officer cannot numerous. be shit at their job and make this many yeah. mistakes. One, you can understand one police officer does something wrong, gets the procedure wrong. I get it. People are human. They make mistakes. Two entire mm-hmm. police forces and police teams can't be this yep. bad, surely. No. And this is, it's not like this is a, uh, a sparsely, lo- you know, no. a sparsely populated area. No. Paderborn is, huge. Is, a, is a good sized city. Yeah. A, yeah. And so it's like the, the, the police forces available in the area yeah. are numerous. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone should have been out looking for her, searching, yeah. trying to find some sort of information, some sort of evidence of what happened to this little girl. We know that the first 24 hours in child abduction is the most crucial time. And for you to not get information out to the public for such a long time after, that is just Mm -hmm. not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. It's just so frustrating. Absolutely right. But. Six weeks. Six weeks. Still after all of this. People are going to forget things after six weeks. People forget things after six days. Yeah. You know, people forget things after a week. What did you eat for dinner last Tuesday? Tacos. It was Tuesday. Okay. What did you eat for dinner last Monday? I don't know. I have no idea what I had for dinner two days ago. I would have to really sit and think about it. Yeah. I have no idea. What did you have dinner six weeks ago? Exactly. What what color top were you wearing last week when we did this? I, I was here looking at you for like three and a half hours. What color were you no wearing idea. last week? I have no idea. And I was sat here mm-hmm. talking to you, just the two of us. For, for over two hours. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what you were wearing last week. How yeah. in the hell are you supposed to remember something like that six weeks later? If it's something as ordinary as a man walking along the road holding a toddler, you're not going to, it's not, if the, if that toddler was screaming blue murder, you probably would remember it. But if the guy was just walking along the road, yeah. feeding that kid chocolate, and that kid's quite happy walking along the road with him, no. you are not going to remember that. You pay that no as, attention. Exactly. No attention. Pay no, even pay no think attention about it. to it. So the police are no. totally in the wrong for all of this. They mm-hmm. not getting that information yeah. out cri- so quickly is cri- is critical to do that. And I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a detective, and I'm not somebody who is qualified in that kind of thing. It's just common sense, surely. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I just don't understand. I don't you understand how this right. can be so badly done. It was very poorly done. Really bad. This might this might be one of the worst. Mm. Definitely. Season jobs that, that we've, we've, yeah, we've seen. Yeah, sadly. Now, a woman would come forward claiming that her boyfriend at the time, who happened to also have served in the same regiment as Richard Lee, had confessed to murdering a child. Okay. Now, the man would be I- interviewed by military police and released without charge after denying that he ever murdered a child or made the confession. Now, shortly after this, the woman who had given this information to police would actually would die herself, and this potential lead just ended. Nothing further came about this lead. So, because he said he didn't say he murdered a child, they've just discounted it, or did they actually investigate this? I don't think they investigated. Oh, man, I don't think they investigated. No, lie me. Nope, nope. Police would tell the the family that they believe that this man was probably a fantasist. So basically, okay. he he had fantasies about things that he wanted to do, and that he had absolutely no connection to Catrice's disappearance. Okay, well, it depends what kind of person he was. I mean, if you've interviewed people that know him, and they go, oh, "Yeah, he's always talking about stuff like that, stupid things." He's always, you know, he's a bit yeah. of a that kind of guy. You know, yeah, okay, maybe. No, but- yeah, absolutely. I would hope that they investigated that. I would hope that they did look into it at least. Uh, you would. I would hope so. You would hope. Yeah. Would, yeah. 
right? Now, in 2012, a woman named Donna Wright was warned by police after she had sent a number of abusive messages to the Lee family on a Facebook page cre- created for Catrice. Why okay? do people do that? Now, this woman, this woman had claimed to have been Catrice, but after a DNA test proved that she was not the missing girl, she began sending messages blaming Sharon for Catrice's disappearance. Okay. In 2014, she would once again start targeting the family, breaking a restraining order that had she, that she had been given, and she would be sentenced to 14 weeks in jail. Okay, uh. that's terrible for the family. Even worse for the family that in 2019, a second woman, this one named Heidi Robinson, ended up in court after she too had set up a, a Facebook profile under the name Catrice Lee. She too would have a DNA test prove that she was not Catrice. And she began refusing to take down the profile and would claim that the TNA, DNA test was a cover up and that Catrice's sister, Natasha, should be investigated. Oh, and this poor family. She, I know, it's terrible. She would end up pleading guilty to using public communication network to send a message that was grossly offensive and decent or menacing, she was given a 18-week prison sentence uh, suspended for two years with a mental health treatment requirement for 12 months in order to carry out rehabilitation activities for 40 days. So could you imagine just this family just having to go through stuff like this over and over and over and people... Because you'd always have hope, wouldn't you? If you were a parent, you'd always have hope that a childless couple has got your child Mm -hmm. and is loving it and is giving it a a lovely, beautiful upbringing. Although you're not there and you're not doing it, that's the comfort and hope that you... you, I mean, you you have to have hope that there's no signs Mm -hmm. of this little girl being dead. So you have to have hope. And I think as a human and as a mother, you would... I can't speak for fathers, but as a mother... I, I'm sure that you'd always have that feeling in the pit of your stomach. What if? What if she's okay? What if she's at school? Yeah. What if she's doing really well? And and then to have somebody come forward and say, look, I think I am your daughter. You must be thinking, please, like, please be her. So at least then I know that you're okay, you, you know, and you're yeah. not missing. Because I think that must be one of the worst things is the not knowing. It must be horrendous to have your child found dead or you know or to be told that your child is dead that must be just the worst thing but you know what's happened to to be mm-hmm. at home wondering because your mind must go through so many things what if they were hurt what if the person treated them badly what if the you know what if they are dead what if they're buried somewhere and they're all alone and what if they've suffered then you've got the well, what if they're alive what if they're okay what if you what if they they've got a family of their own because she's in her 40s now what if i've got grandchildren what if she doesn't know that i'm her mum mm-hmm. You know, what if she feels yeah. like something's not quite right, but she can't, she doesn't understand or she doesn't find out, which is why I think it's so important to have things like the the birthmark put out there and the the condition with her eye and because not everybody would have got that corrected. So what if right. she is still yeah. okay? What if she's still in Germany? What if she's in a different mm-hmm. country and the people in the different yeah. country don't know anything about, you know, her going missing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that just must be right. so torturous for the family. It just must be. I hate that for them. I hate that for them. It's terrible. And I mean, look, this and this happens all the time yeah. with families families that have missing children. Yeah, it just happened with um, the family of Malin McCann. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Where there was the woman, twenty year old woman in uh, in Poland, who claimed that 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 she was Madeline, right? Yeah. And even though DNA tests. You know, have they been have they been discounted wouldn't. then? Have they done the DNA yeah, test? Yeah, they've been discounted. Now? Have yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that discounted. update on that one yet. I knew that she was. They were going for the DNA test. I saw that on TikTok. She's got a TikTok, isn't she? Saying how she's got the same condition as Madeline. Her baby pictures. They do. I mean, to be fair, the the child pictures of her they are very similar to Madeline. So you can see where that's yeah, come yeah. from. And if she is confused about her parentage or her growing up, if she's confused and there's things missing from her memory. You can understand how she might think that, you know, that's the case, but that just mm-hmm. must be awful for the parents. If I, I couldn't imagine having to go through that. The even even if you know you, you hear something like that, and you're like, like okay, it's not going to be her, but you just you still would have this hope, 
Yeah. You still have to have that hope that maybe that is her. Of course. It's, it's got to be human. It's got to be a human nature. You've got to always try and keep that hope alive because what if? What if? You can't categorically mm. say, no, she's she's dead. So what if she's alive and well and living a happy life and, you know, you've got a whole entire new generation of family somewhere and she's married and she's, you know, finished school and she does, what job does she do? You must always, and I think you must mm-hmm. always think when you're out in a crowded place, your eyes must always scan for somebody who could look like her, you know, somebody oh, maybe yeah. who, yeah. I mean, because you don't know, do you? But when you look at baby photos of people, like if I was to look at your baby photos, chances are I would be able to guess that that's you because it you do yeah. look like your baby self, you know? And I know at the time when you're a baby, you can't predict your adult self. But when you look back, you can you can see your baby self. And I wonder if, you know, when they're out and they're shopping or they, they go somewhere, if they see somebody and you think, God, she looks she looks like my daughter. Could that be her? You must never stop. It must be emotionally and mentally. It just must be horrific for a family member. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't. I. I. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. It would be. Oh God! It would just. It'd be it would way too much. No, it would just rip you to pieces. It would just be horrific. Yeah. Now, as I mentioned previously. The photo fit of the man seen placing the mm. small child into the green sedan was released during an episode of Crime Watch in February 2017. This is why it's important to put things out like put things like this out yeah. as soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. Because the following year, a police informant would provide investigators with a name of a man he believed resembled the photo fit. Yeah. He claimed to have trained with the man in the RAF, but the two had parted ways in 1980. Okay, so while I don't know what happened to this potential lead, what it what it's here for is, look, you put out a photo fit and you get a a possible hit. Yeah. You know, without this photo fit, this guy doesn't come forward with any sort of information. That's right. Now, the other thing is with this photo fit. In April 2018. So this is just months after the photo fit was released. Yeah. A team of military personnel and civilian forensic experts announced that they plan to excavate a stretch of riverbank along the River Almay near the Paderborner Strasse. Okay. A review of the evidence had concluded that the bank was of significant and of interest. Okay. An investigator would state that a green sedan had been seen on the bridge going over the River Almay the day after Catrice's disappearance. And they've come forward this long later. Jeez. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, an excavation of the riverbank did start in early May of 20, uh, 2018, and it was scheduled to take five weeks. However, on May 29th, military investigators announced that they were ending the renewed investigation after finding no new evidence. Oh, Okay. There were some bone fragments that were found during the search, but they would be d- dismissed by forensic experts as not animal, being yeah, human. Animal bones. Yeah, okay. being him. That's right. The site would officially be ruled out of the investigation in ju- June 2019. <laughs> Probably okay. because she didn't go into the now, river. That's why. <laughs> exactly, right? Now, r- this is really the last update we've had, and it was in 2019. Okay. Um, the Royal Military Police would announce that a former serviceman had been arrested in the area of Swindon in connection to the disappearance of Catrice Lee. However, after interviewing the man and conducting a thorough search of his property, he would be released without charge after two days. Okay. So, so, so if they're searching his property in Swindon, they obviously think yes. that, that Catrice is alive because her body wouldn't be in yeah. Swindon if they had killed right. her in Germany. Exactly. So they're obviously yeah. they're obviously looking at leads that she is still, or intelligence at least, that she is still alive. I mean, this is the sort of thing that I think podcasts and things like Crime Watch and Media can help with immensely because you don't know when somebody is going to listen to this episode. 
we I have right. messages from people that are listening to episodes that we did two years ago that will message me and say, have you thought of this? D- I live in that area. I knew that lady's husband and he was always really dodgy at school or he was always really dodgy when we walked home from school. We used to walk away from his house. Mm-hmm. This is coming yeah. two years after we released our episode. So yeah. in a year's time, somebody could be listening to us talking now that was stationed in my I mean my family was stationed in Germany because my dad Mm -hmm. was in the military so this could be that this reaches somebody and the word paternoster or the you know the the fact that we've talked about somewhere that maybe they were stationed with their family when they were children they then mention it to mum and dad mum and dad then go oh my god didn't so and so have a little girl you know randomly come out of nowhere or do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And there's things like that, that to keep this this spoken word going. Just keep it out there. Keep these right. little key things, like the this thing with her eye, like the fact that she's, mm-hmm. you know, she doesn't look like any of her family members. You know, a friend of yours that grew up that looks totally different to everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, you bring up a you just brought up a very good point about um, in these military communities. Yeah, Allen Brook, Allen Brook barracks are not huge they're not no. big it's a small community and everyone knows everybody in the military barracks families everyone knows everyone yeah exactly so if if a child yeah popped out of nowhere yeah. someone within that the military community they would, would know. have noticed yeah because when the men are away um and when they are you know on their tours or whatever the women are left behind and the lim- the women tend to make a community of each other mm-hmm. if suddenly there's this kid that's not a baby that's just come out of nowhere i mean what story would you use oh this is my niece or this is so and so you know you, i mean you're not going to tell all those women that you've been pregnant for 2 years and you've suddenly popped out a toddler it's not going to happen right so Somebody mm-hmm. somewhere is going to remember a family getting a child, whether that be adoption, mm-hmm. whether they've lied and said, oh, we've adopted because I can't conceive. Somebody is going to be talking about that. They're going to talk about it. Women gossip. They are going to talk about it. Trust yeah. me. I think that if if this was, if her disappearance was connected to someone, a man or a woman, yeah. within the service, I think it was either... A, an accidental death, yeah. right? getting hit in a car park, or B, she would have been killed and disposed of quickly. Do you know what? Okay. I I have a I, I have a feeling. Just I don't know why, but just listening to you talk about it, I just have a gut feeling she's living somewhere. <laughs> I I have that I have that feeling too. I don't know why, but I don't, I don't know why, but but. My issue is is if she, if if that's the case, and and I, and I agree with you that that she's out there somewhere. I don't think it it she would have been raised by a military family. I think chances are, if that's the case, she would have been abducted by someone not associated with yeah. with the military, with the military not yeah. someone within Allenbrook no. barracks, someone. Who could be German, Polish, whatever it might be, mm. because you can retune a toddler. You could you could take that toddler to a yes. different country and teach that toddler a different language, and that yes. kid will grow up with an accent that you've given it. That kid's not necessarily yeah. going to grow, up, you know, and have absolutely no have idea, absolutely no idea. Yeah, that's right. That they're not German. D- that that they are. They have two English parents. Yeah, I have nothing to. I have nothing to you know, concretely say that, but just from my just gut feeling on this case, if I was asked to give an opinion of a gut feeling, I think that, I don't know, I I just, I think it's too quick for somebody with those kind of intentions to just massively just, I mean, have they checked sex offender profiles in the area? Did they, did they do that at the time? I I don't know what what the registration was at the time. Right. I have no idea because obviously that would be one so of I the first I, things I would check too. How how many sex offenders yeah. do they have on on record living around that area? Um, mm-hmm. I hope I hope but that, it, that she's uh, out there. I think it's just a you know yeah. it's a it's a hope, and I really do hope that, that that's the case for her family. I really this hope is, that they find yeah, her. This is either an accident or yeah a an abduction, just an opportunist, yeah, right? Abduction, yeah. Someone just like, oh, this is what we've been waiting for. Yes. This isn't someone that was like out stalking. No, them, no, no. Stalking I, I agree. Child. I agree. I totally agree. Because that, that family, I, th- well, but, I don't know. 
I have this feeling too that if it was an accident, like even though the the thought of maybe she was hit in the car park, yeah. and just in her body was taken, I feel like if it was an accident, sh- something would have been found of hers. She would either no, the body yeah, would have been know. found. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You don't know who mm. was in that car park. You don't know where they've come from. I mean, she could be in yeah. the boot of the car for miles. They could have driven her miles mm-hmm. away, and no one's any the wiser that she's in that boot of that car. No, no one be any yeah, the wiser. True. And unless there was blood evidence on that car park, you know, asphalt, unless unless she was bleeding, it could have happened too quick that she was that she was bleeding. Yeah. But I think it's more likely that that you know, obviously, she's got to have got out of the shop. For, to start with, the very first thing is that she, the the one lady thought she was running to the other woman. That kid has got to have gone out of the shop. She obviously ran towards where her mum was because otherwise the auntie would have been like, where are you going? No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, no. I, yeah. Absolutely. So she's got to have got out in, of the shop at some point. Yeah. She had to been intercepted yes. between the auntie and the mom. Yeah. She had to been intercepted. And taken out of that shop quickly. So, yeah. I mean... I, I, without her fussing or, or crying or screaming or yelling yeah and surely somebody would do, see somebody leaving that with a, a, an adult with a, its its hand over a toddler's mouth you know oh absolutely so yeah. somebody I, I find it i don't know i just find it really strange i mean i don't think she was hit in the car park i'm just saying that is a possibility i don't it, think it that's what happened because i think it's yeah. too quick if she was wandering around outside and somebody hit her somebody would have seen that but I've got I'm no, more in, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm more inclined to think somebody picked her up, carried her out, gave her chocolate or whatever to keep her quiet or gave her keys, even like keys, well, you know, to keep a toddler yeah. entertained. And and nobody's going to really thought, look at that. What's your thought on this green, green sedan? Well, I mean, it's very it's mentioned twice. Exactly. It's very, it's very strange that it's brought up more than one occasion I mean, yeah. was it a man driving it? They said it was a man a man driving a green sedan. They said it was a man. So there you are. They said they saw, saw the man putting yeah. a young child into a green sedan. You can't ignore that. You can't ignore that evidence from but somebody. But it was ignored for, for nearly 40 years. That's it was just, ignored. It's just crazy. That, to me, is the most crucial part of evidence in this whole thing. There's nothing in the river. And then somebody's there saying that I saw a man putting a toddler in a green sedan. That should have gone straight out on the news. Straight out. And then people will be going, oh, so-and-so's got a green sedan. I'll phone the police and tip them off. They can go and have... I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. It's so frustrating. So frustrating. It is absolutely frustrating. Really bad. So so I think it's important, once again... Let me just give a quick description. This is yeah, her when she it. was two. Yeah, give it a description of her. Things are... You're you're not going to change. Yeah. So she had... Curly, light brown hair. You can change hair color, fine, right? Um, it's harder to hide curly hair, make curly hair straight. Well, I don't it's know. My hair difficult. is very, very curly. Naturally, oh, yeah, very curly. Okay. So yeah. I think you can. That that kind of thing, I think you can change. Well, but over time, the curls are going to keep coming back. You you cannot fundamentally change change your hair, though. I mean, you have to you have to work on it. Oh yeah, if you're right? the, if you're that but over, person, but your friends and family might not necessarily know how curly your hair is. Right. Okay. She has so light brown hair. Yeah. That, well, like I said, that could change. She has brown eyes. That can't change. Once again, she had a. That cannot change. She had a. She has. I don't want to say she had. She has a pink birthmark, slightly to the right, of the base of her spine, which looked like a rash. Okay. So if you saw it, you might think it's a rat. Yeah. Birthmarks aren't going away. Nope. Once again, she, at the time of the disappearance, she had uh, strab- strabismus, right, in her left eye. That could have possibly been fixed. Or if it wasn't known that it could be fixed, she could possibly still have that. Yeah. Or she would have had some sort of operation. So it would be somebody who's had some operation on their eye. At some point in their mm-hmm. life, exactly. I mean, it's it's tough because um, she was so young. So yeah, some distinguishing features she that she might not have even grown into. So she still has the baby fat. So so it, it, it's really tough to describe what she could possibly look like now. I know that yeah. they have done the 
the age progression, um, which is, I mean, it's it's the best that we have, right? Right. Be a good idea to put pictures up of the mom and dad at the time of her disappearance, because I yeah. would imagine yeah. she would look like you. You normally look like one of your parents. Like your distinguishing features mm-hmm. usually are like your parents, um, even if you don't grow up with them. You know, and yeah. so it would be very interesting for them to release pictures of the mum and dad from that time because you could look at those pictures and go, oh, my God, my nose is really similar to that. I've got a birthmark at the bottom of my back. I had an operation mm-hmm. when I was a kid on my eye. This is a bit weird. Both my parents are blonde. Yeah. Or, you know, so it would be quite interesting to do mm-hmm. that because somebody out there might be thinking my childhood doesn't really add up. There's nothing, no pictures of my mum pregnant. There's no pictures of me as a baby. Might be quite an interesting yeah. thing to do. Yeah, and just looking at the, at the pictures of um, actually both Catrice and her sister Natasha. Yeah, I they both have. I, I'm pretty sure they both have their dad's nose. Okay, you can see yeah. very similarities to in the nose. Of course, so, and the sister. Yeah, um, put pictures of the sister about that would also be another thing that would be interesting. Yeah, because I'm sure she's got similar characteristics to her sister. I mean, I, I really, really hope that she's out there somewhere and that she can be reunited. You know, it, it and it would be if she is, I know it's gonna it would be a shock to her system. Yeah. Right? She's lived lived forty forty three years or actually I mean forty one years um without her parents now. Yeah. And sister. And and so how do you handle not not knowing that your life was a lie, but that your life could have been completely different if if you had not been taken. That's right. Yeah. Bless her. That's crazy. No, so that is the that is our case this week. It's, it's um, a very interesting case, a very sad case, but very interesting. And I, I really hope that somebody somewhere listens to this podcast and it resonates or something makes sense and come forward if it does just just come forward and just see because if it if that's the case you know this could be a whole new world and a whole new family and a whole new you know a lot of unanswered questions Mm -hmm. for somebody no exactly exactly okay well thank you for that that was yeah very very sad (laughs) very very sad well i've got something to cheer you up slightly at the end of each show if you never listened before we do a segment which we like to affectionately call dumb criminal hey criminal use a dummy this criminal is a dummy now this is a felon (laughs) from washington state okay this guy is called cameron jeffrey wilson he's 27 years old and he was carrying a gun in his front pocket while in um, an apartment, in his apartment, on April the Mm -hmm. 5th. Now, the firearm accidentally discharged and pierced his groin and his thigh. (gasps) Egypt. Bloody Egypt. Okay. Now, he was a 13-time convicted felon. He told his girlfriend to dispose of the weapon before he went to the hospital. Okay. Whilst he went, when he actually got to the hospital... And the doctor was examining him. Um, The doctor was operating the gunshot wound, okay? And a balloon of marijuana slipped out of his bumhole. What? Not the doctor's bumhole, the felon's bumhole. Oh. (laughs) It wasn't the doctor. So the doctor is there operating on the the gunshot wound, and there's a little surprise. Yeah. Out of the offender's you know, backside comes a small balloon of marijuana. So the police arrived at the hospital because obviously they were alerted of this gunshot wound by the doctors. And they searched his car where they found a bag of meth in the bloodstained jeans that he was wearing when he shot himself. (laughs) Okay. God. (laughs) So it actually worked out that he actually shot himself in the testicles. (laughs) <laughs> in his testicles and his leg, okay? All because he had this gun, obviously didn't have the safety on, in his pocket. Oh. Now, he was... Um, no. <laughs> he, the officers issued an arrest warrant for him, and then he ended up turning himself into the police. And um, as he was stri- strip-searched, another balloon of marijuana slipped from his backside. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
His bum is like a clown car. It just yeah, keeps coming out. Yeah, it just keeps popping out. And then whilst he was in jail, apparently he made a number of different calls to his girlfriend, asking her not to cooperate with the investigators working on his case. Well, of course, when you make jailhouse phone calls, investigators are listening to your phone calls. <laughs> okay, They're all recorded. Everything's recorded, you doofus. Don't they even announce it? Don't they, like, yeah. when you call from police, like, you know, this call yeah. is recorded? Yeah. Now, oh my God. <laughs> he was charged, obviously, with possession of a firearm, unlawful possession of meth, mm-hmm. possession of a controlled mm-hmm. substance in a correctional facility, and four counts of tampering with a witness. Oh, my God. God, I mean, a complete dumbass. Ass, you Does used a dumbass, a marijuana ass. Wait, you said this was in Washington State? Yeah, Washington State, yeah. And when did this occur? This was... May, oh, it was reported in May 2019. So it's April April 5th, 2019. Okay. What's confusing me is that... Well, first off, first off, why, why do you have these balloons in his bum? I don't know. Okay. What was he doing? Because if in Washington State, it is legal uh-huh. to have... To be in possession of marijuana. And it's been so. Since, I don't like, think he got in trouble for the marijuana. I think he got in trouble for the meth. I think it was a surprise that the marijuana no, no, no. just fell out. <laughs> no, yeah, the, no, no, no. But my point is, is if it's legal to possess yeah, marijuana, you bum? wouldn't have to put it in your bum. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because he was trying to take it in somewhere. Maybe, maybe he was going. I don't know. Why? I don't know why he would store the, the drugs there. It keeps the meth out and the marijuana up there. Yeah, multiple it's... balloons of it. <sighs> Just that crazy, is so isn't it? So weird. Yeah, it's not. You know, it's not. I mean, a bag. Only thing, don't be putting things in there. The only thing I th- can think of is he was planning on smuggling it into prison. Maybe, yeah. But he wasn't in prison. I don't know because there is there is no need for you to for you to be storing it in your bum. No, your bum's not for storage, people. It's not. No, don't use it as a handbag. It's not good. No, it's not a handbag. <laughs> and also, don't shoot yourself in the testicles. You're going to need them. Don't, no. don't shoot yourself oh, in those. God. You know? Yeah, you silly dumbass. Now he's the guy in the jail that's known as the, known as the guy with no balls yeah. and who can yeah. can store marijuana in his bum. Yeah, he's a pot ass no balls. <laughs> <laughs> so that is this week's very extremely dumb uh. criminal. If you know somebody called Cameron Jeffrey Wilson, who likes to be like a slot machine and push marijuana out of his bum... <laughs> Tell him from us, he's a dumbass. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Thank you so you much. You are for that. so welcome for that little nugget of information you you're going to take away from this show this week. <laughs> little nugget. <laughs> little nugget. It was more than a little nugget that was coming out of that bum. So we will be back next week with another episode for you. In between, you can mm-hmm. catch us on our social medias. You can check out our our website you can find us on instagram you can find us on facebook anywhere you want and um catch up with us thank you for all the messages i've got a few messages actually this week of cases that i'm going to be looking at so thanks for your case suggestion we are very happy to receive case suggestions from you if it's something that um has affected you or you've always wondered about by all means just send it over to us um email addresses are so easy it's just cherry at crimepediapodcast.com or morgan at crimepediapodcast.com so nice and easy for you and we'll be back next week so for now be nice and bye (laughs) that was a long one